the month of Tishrei, which is uh, which is the month in which we have these holidays, okay, is the seventh month, okay, according to the uh, biblical calendar, okay, it is the first month according to another system of counting the months uh, in the Jewish tradition, and we'll talk about that when we talk about Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the year. Um, we have that in uh, in the Bible, it is referred to as the seventh month. This is the month of the days of awe, okay, or the Rosh Hashanah, Yom HaKippurim, often oftentimes are referred to as Hayamim HaNoraim. Modern Hebrew speakers would uh, would uh, might misunderstand this as the awful day in the the way awful is used today. But these are days that are full of awe, right? That's the meaning of these days. The meaning of the month Tishrei is beginning. In Akkadian, Akkadian guys is the language that was spoken in Mesopotamia, in the northern part of Mesopotamia. We have Assyrian, and in the southern part, we have Babylonian. And these generally are referred to as Akkadian. Akkadian is the language that was the lingua franca, the, the main language of the ancient Near East before Aramaic. And because the people who were exiled after the destruction of the first temple were exiled to uh to the area of uh, Mesopotamia, okay, they came back with the names that were Babylonian. I should say that the names of the months in the Bible themselves, in the Bible itself, we have three different sets of referring to the months. One of them is indeed this Babylonian convention. Not all of the months are mentioned according to that Babylonian convention and their Babylonian names, but some of them are mentioned by this convention. This is the later part, because as we said, this is a convention that came from Babylon with the returnees to Zion. However, the other two conventions, the first one is an ordinal convention, that is to refer to the months by the order, the first month, the second month, and we'll see some examples uh, down the road today. This very interestingly, there is another small convention that is concentrated around the chapters dealing with the building of the first temple in uh, one Kings eight, for instance. The month of Eitanim is also the same month of Tishrei, so this month is referred to as Eitanim. Eitanim. In Jewish tradition, the month of Eitanim, Eitan means enduring, lasting. Uh, so the rabbi said this is called the month of Eitanim because the patriarchs uh, were born on this month. Okay, but the month of Eitanim is the seventh month. Again, these are the three conventions. The earliest convention in the Bible is the ordinal one. Then around the chapters dealing with the building of the first temple, we've got Eitanim, and Tishrei would be the of the third set of, of the um, naming convention of the Bible, even though it is not mentioned explicitly. Um, this is, according to Jewish tradition, the month in which Adam was created, the patriarchs were created, uh, Joseph uh, was released from the uh, his incarceration, and the Israelites stopped being uh, enslaved in Egypt. Okay, this is, uh, but literally, Tishrit means beginning, as I said. Uh, it is also referred to as the, as the month of Asif, month of gathering. You remember that we have, you, you might have heard about Luach Gezer, the Gezer calendar. There was a uh, an agricultural calendar that was found in the, uh, in the excavations at the city of Gezer. And 
for many years it was considered to be the earliest Hebrew text that was recovered. And there it is referred to as Asif, Asif gathering, okay, because it's a time of gathering the produce from the field or finishing that gathering of the produce. So that's a little bit about the month in and of itself. Now, as far as the holidays that we have in this month, uh, at least the main the main things, remember that there is always more intric intricacies and little details, but these cover the what you need to know in a little bit more. Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, we'll get to that. The 10 days of repentance, the 10 days starting with Rosh Hashanah and ending with Yom Kippur um, are called the 10 days of repentance. Then the third day of, of the month of Tishrei. So Rosh Hashanah actually is two days. It's the first and second of Tishrei. Um, the 10 days are between the 1st, as I said, and the 10th, between Rosh Hashanah and Yom HaKippurim. The fast of Gedaliah, we'll talk about this fast day. That's the 3rd of, of uh, Tishrei. Sometimes it's on the 4th, because if the 3rd falls on a Shabbat, we don't fast on a Shabbat unless that Shabbat... Unless it's Yom Kippur, then we do fast on Shabbat. But all of the other Jewish fast days, if they fall on a Shabbat, we fast on Sunday. Yom Kippur is on the 10th. Okay. Sukkot starts on the 14th. Okay. And Hoshana Rabbah is on the 21st of Tishrei. And Shemini Atzeret and Simchat Torah are on the 22nd. And parenthetically, I would say 23rd because, and I'll get to that, I'll explain why down the road. So these are the holidays. And let's get into each of these holidays. By the way, if you have any questions, meanwhile, you are more than welcome to use the chat and leave those questions there. Okay, these are generally, this is about the month and about the holidays. Let's go one by one, starting with Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah literally means the head of the year, the beginning of the year. This is the first, uh, this is the opening of the year. Now, the Mishnah, which is a post-biblical collection of uh, mostly Jewish law organized by tractates, organized by, by subjects. Each subject uh, tractate um, has a tractate that dedicated to that subject and divided, generally speaking, to six orders, but all in all, 60 tractates. The Mishnah, in the order that deals with uh, the yearly cycle, the annual cycle of holidays, has a tractate dedicated to Rosh Hashanah. Now, the Mishnah in the first chapter of tractate Rosh Hashanah, in the first verse, the first Mishnah, each of the verses are called Mishnah as well, says that we have four new years. And, you know, it strikes, some of my students, it strikes them, you know, odd at the beginning. But then when you think about it, we also have different beginnings for our years, right? Sometimes we have the fiscal year, the taxation, the tax year. The universities have the beginning of the academic year. Schools, regular schools have the school year. And so we have different beginnings for the year. And so Jewish tradition also has uh, different beginnings for the for the uh, year, and each of these beginnings is dedicated to to a different aspects of the year. So that's the four different, uh, and and I usually and I'm mentioning it because 
most of my students, they know the Bible and they say, oh, just a second, the month of Aviv, the month in which we have the Exodus is the first month, right? The Bible says, Exodus uh, 12, HaChodesh Hazel Lachem Rosh Chodashim, this month should be the head of all months in regards to the month of Aviv, the month of Passover. So that's right for certain purposes. Okay, for other purposes, we start the year on the seventh month. Here, uh, the biblical name of this celebration is not Rosh Hashanah. This is a later rabbinic name. Okay, and in the Bible, it is called Yom Teruah, the day of sounding. Uh, the the uh, the trumpets or the the horns, okay. That's Yom Teruah. It is also called Zichron Teruah, Yom Hazikaron, the day of of memorial or remem remembrance. Uh, we are standing before God and asking Him to remember us, and we are sound sounding the shofar. Some of the um, as I said, this is part of the Yamim Noraim, awesome days or awful, but not in the same, not in the sense of bad, but rather full, filled with awe. Some of the things we do on Rosh Hashanah traditionally, so we sound the shofar 100 times each day, okay? Roughly, I don't want to get into why 100 and some do 101, some even do 102. Uh, I'm not getting into that, but generally 100 sounds. Uh, we we eat apples dipped in honey, okay, because we want to have a very good year. Uh, we, we eat fish, sometimes the head of the fish, because we want to be the head and not the tail, okay? Um, and we eat pomegranate and, and many other things by which we use which we use for simanim signs. Like we don't think that by eating those things, you know, something miraculous will happen, but rather they signify for us things. So, for instance, the rimon it has a crown. It's a beautiful. It's very nutritious, and it is filled with filled with good small seeds that are very sweet. We say that even the people who are most simple and most uh, like not seemingly from the outside don't have anything to do with commandments and with God, they are filled with good things like this pomegranate. Okay, so that's a few things that we do on Rosh Hashanah. Again, I'm not getting into all of the things we do. You're more than welcome if you want to uh, know more about any of the stuff that I'm talking about now, you can ask about them in the Q&A part at the end, and you can already write them now in the chat box. So if I see them in the chat box, I'll be able to, uh, or in the q and I'll be able to address some of these points. Moving on to the 10 days of repentance. Aseret Yemei Teshuvah. Uh, Aseret Yemei Teshuvah are the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year's, all the way to Yom Kippur. Okay, and the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are days dedicated to uh, repentance, to thinking about what we've done, what we, what we can do better, how we can be better. Um, and these are, this is the essence of the 10 days of Teshuvah, of repentance. The word Teshuvah means repentance, but it also means returning. We are trying to return to a, an earlier stage. Um, but not just in the simple sense of returning to what the way I was before I sinned, but rather to a kind of an old site, uh, an earlier period where things were like 
different. So that's the concept of teshuva. Um, there is a practice called selichot. Selichot is people people getting up at night, middle of the night, or very early in the morning, and they pray. Uh, many people go to the Western Wall, as you can see in this picture, to say these prayers, starting already a month before Rosh Hashanah, but uh, also during the period of uh, the 10 days of repentance, Aseret Yemei Teshuva. This guy is kind of a, a very picturesque uh, uh, guy from the Western Wall. He, he has funny blessings. He blesses people with with the rhymes and and uh if you see him if you come to visit in israel and you see him ask him to bless you he is uh very funny he has uh like funny rhymes i don't know you'll have to have someone translate i don't know if he does it in english but uh he is uh part of the scene of the western wall okay moving on to the Tzom uh, Gedalia, the fast of Gedalia. So the fast of Gedalia is one of the minor fast day fast days of Judaism. When I say minor fast days, I mean that it is not uh, not everybody fast on this day for uh, two reasons, and we'll get to that. But I first want to talk about what is what is this fast commemorate? Okay. Does, uh, John is asking, is the New Year's always fall, falling, you know, does it always fall in October? The answer is that it also may fall in September, as, as it did this year, right? We celebrate the, the New Year just uh, a few days ago, right? It was... Uh, still September. We are still in September. So it's not always in October. This has to do with the uh, the way the Jewish calendar is combining the solar and the lunar system. But I don't know that we have... I might be able to elaborate a little bit more about it later. Okay. Anyway, the fast of Gedalia. Why do we fast? So we fast because of the events that are described in towards the end of the Book of Kings, okay, where we have uh, the figure of Gedaliah, son of Achikam, who is appointed by the Babylonians to lead the the remnants of the people who were here, okay, and the. In the end of that period, okay, he, uh, the Babylonians appoint him, and he is assassinated, okay, by Yishmael, son of Netanyah, okay, and and that's Gedaliah or Gedaliahu. He appears by both names in the Bible, and he is assassinated by someone from the. Uh, line of king david because you know he he thought that you know there sh they should not appoint someone over the people and by that that was the last chord in the symphony of destruction uh that of the first temple uh, in the the kingdom of judah okay so after the destruction they still had someone who was leading the, the remnant here. And when he was assassinated, the, the people fled to Egypt because they feared uh, the Babylonian response. So I'll read the Hebrew here. Uh, right. Bear with me. Vayhi b'chodesh hashevi'i. And it happened on the seventh month. Ba Yishmael ben Netanyah ben Elishama Mizera Hamelucha came Ishmael, son of Netanyah, son of Elishama, from the line of the kingship. Va Asara Anashim Ito, and ten men were with him. 
ויכו את גדליהו וימות, and they struck uh, גדליהו, and he died. ואת היהודים ואת הכסדים אשר היו איתו במצפה, alongside the Jews and the Chaldeans that were with him at the at mitzvah. Okay. And the response of the people was, ויקומו כל העם מקטון ועד גדול ושרי החיילים. And the whole people, uh, young and old, small and insignificant and great, small and great, ושרי החיילים, even the captain of the, the captains of the uh, army, ויבואו מצרים, and they came into Egypt, they went to Egypt, כי יראו מפני חסדים, for they feared the Babylonians, the Chaldeans. And, and that was the, the end of the destruction of the first temple. And so uh, we have several fast days that are related to the destruction of the first temple. And this is uh, the, last, uh, the last part of that destruction. So that's the fast of Gedalia. I would uh, just add two reservations that people have with this fast day. This is why they don't fast. I, um, first of all, today we do have an independent state. So people say, oh, by fasting, uh, in a sense, we are being ungrateful to God who has given us an independent state again. Uh, so reading Zechariah, who talks about these days becoming a days of celebration, they say we should not fast, at least on these days, maybe even celebrate. But they they say we should not fast, some people. Uh, other people refuse to fast on this day because they say this he was actually a, a culprit of the Babylonian. He's, he was a collaborator with a foreign uh, power. That was the Babylonians. So nationalistically, they, they observe him as an accomplice and they don't have fast uh, on the day he died. And the last point, you know that in 1995, in November of uh, 95, 4th of November 1995, the Prime Minister of Israel, Yitzhak Rabin, was assassinated by, by uh, a citizen, by a Jew here in Israel, Yigal Amir. Some people take that day to talk about political, uh, pay, political tolerance and, and to also mention what happened to Prime Minister Rabin because... Uh, this was the first political assassination in Jewish history. And and so they take that fast day, which, as I said, is already commemorating a political assassination, and they associate the assassination of Pri late Prime Minister Rabin in, in the same way. So that's a little bit about the fast of Gedaliah. Moving on to Yom Kippur. Uh, I should again say that the biblical name of this day is not Yom Kippur. It is well known as Yom Kippur, but it's actually, in the Bible, it's called Yom HaKippurim. It's not a big difference, right? It's a masculine plural of uh, the same thing. Yom Kippur or Yom HaKippurim, the day of, of covering, literally uh, the 10th day of the seventh month. It's a day of atonement or covering literally, um, and essentially it's the atonement of the high priest over the temple, over himself, over his fellow priests, and over the whole people. When you read those verses in Leviticus and in uh, Numbers, uh, when, when, I, when I say atonement or covering, it is essentially a purification of, of all kinds of sins, okay? In order for God to forgive the people, okay? That's the uh, essence, the biblical essence of Yom HaKippurim, uh, Day of Atonement. Ach, before I read, guys, I add here a question. Let's see if you know who is this guy and why is he here? Okay, so that's a little bit riddled for you to uh, to identify and to answer uh, either in the chat or the Q&A, whatever. 
אך בעשור לחודש השביעי הזה, יום הכיפורים הוא. מקרא קודש יהיה לכם. Exactly on the 10th day of this month, of this seventh month, you can see the, the naming convention of the months that we've talked about, an ordinal convention. יום הכיפורים הוא. It is the day of atonement. מקרא קודש יהיה לכם. It is a, a convocation of, of holiness. Okay, you call the people for a holiness purpose. ואיניתם את נפשותיכם. You should uh, humble, you should uh, card your, cause yourself to discomfort. Okay, we practice fast day. Vehikavtem ishel Adonai, you should present an offering, a uh, fire offering to the Lord. Now, I should say that besides the, besides the, um, concept of of uh fast there are certain elements other than fasting that we don't do on yom kippur uh we don't eat or drink right we don't have relations okay we don't um have regular leather shoes we don't wear leather shoes okay we don't anoint ourselves Okay, these are mainly the, the things that are prohibited during the Day of Atonement. Okay, now a few things. So first of all, let's see if there are any answers. Yeah, Ron, very good. So Ron, I'm opening your microphone and you'll tell us, uh, you'll tell us who is this guy and why do, did I put him here? Go ahead, Ron. Uh, unmute your okay. mic. Okay. All right. Uh, Sandy Koufax. I know uh, I recognize the picture, first of all, and only from the context of, of our class. And I, what I'm thinking about was chariots of fire, actually. That's what I was thinking about at first, where the guys refused to race because of the holiday. In this case, I think he refused to play because of the holiday. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, I'll make a connection with actually a different event though from the Olympics from years ago. It was almost the same kind of story though. Right. There are a few stories like that. Yeah. Uh, but I think Cindy Koufax is the, the famous, yeah. the famous among which, among these stories. He was a Hall of Fame teacher, teacher mm -hmm. for, for, uh, uh, for his team. And he refused to, to uh, play in game number one of the 1965 World Series again. Funny, it's called the World Series. Nobody plays baseball, uh, yeah. <laughs> right? America. Yeah. But America, yeah. Right. Anyway, uh, so he refused, and it was a very, very, you know, like big issue uh, back then. And and that's how he is remembered in, in like, American life. A few things that um, are worth mentioning. Again, we can talk about each of these holidays for a very long time. This is a very famous picture uh, by Maurizio Gottlieb, or uh, Maurizio Gottlieb in English, or Maurizio. He was a painter, and many of these are self-portrait. This is a portrait of Jews praying in the Day of Atonement in Yom Kippurim, in Yom Kippur. And the, he, when he wrote it, the, the, on this Torah scroll, this outer, um, uh, the outer um, garment of the the Torah scroll that that you do, is dedicated for his like for him after his dead, and he, so so he painted it and he dedicated this, you know, to commemorate his memory while still alive. He uh, also took several self-portraits of him. So this is him, this is him, this is him, and this is him wow. in different stages of his life. He was, uh, unfortunately, he took his own life. Wow. Yeah, he was a troubled individual, but a very gifted painter. Uh, in Israel, because people don't 
drive. Even those people who are not very religious, they respect this day. So the 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 whole country, almost the whole country, has no cars. Uh, Jews, even non-observant Jews, do not use their cars during this time. So it is also known as the bicycle holidays. You can see kids riding their bicycles and and people riding their bicycles on on the main roads because nobody is driving even if people who don't fast uh usually don't drive their cars so ridiculously it is known as the bicycle holiday you can say you come back from the synagogue you see people on their bicycles it's it's a little bit absurd but it's there is something beautiful about it you know the fact that they don't drive but again it they're not observing it in the traditional way so so it's a very kind of uh i'm ambiguous i'm you know uh for me it's it's really uh interesting how how this is um how this is uh acting out you know it's a special thing okay moving on to the to the next holiday and that's the holiday of Sukkot as we said on the 14th day of of the month of Tishrei the festival of booths or tabernacles as you know uh it is known by both uh names we the the biblical name is Sukkot okay and this is one of the three um the three festivals okay the, this festival falls in the 14th day uh of the month of the seventh month or the month of tishrei we build the sukkah which is the booth we use arba'at haminim the four species okay and another beautiful a little bit less known tradition is Simchat Bet HaSho'eva. Uh, the celebration, one of the themes of the celebration of Sukkot is water, because it's just before the, the season, the rain season in Israel. So uh, we are, uh, the tradition was that in the temple, they would pour water. Uh, usually they would not use water on on, in the sacrificial work, but wine, oil, and during the months of Sukkot, we use water as well, and they would draw the water from the Gihon, and the whole thing was a very, very uh, lavish celebration, and very joyous one, so people still celebrate in this, uh, in this uh, fashion every day during Sukkot, it's a really, really a very, very joyous holiday, uh, let's say people know about Hanukkah, Hanukkah, Hanukkah because it falls next to Christmas. But really, the the most uh, the holiday in which the concept of celebration or festival or or simcha is most stressed out is the holiday of Sukkot. The tradition is that Rabbi uh, Rabban Gamliel and Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, which were the ethnarchs, they were the leaders of the Jewish people, they would play with these uh, fire sticks uh, and they would throw eight of them and they would uh, juggle them all around. So that's a little bit about uh, the what we do in Sukkot. Uh, the celebration of Sukkot is mentioned in the Torah uh, in four different uh, places we have uh, them in in um, Exodus, in Leviticus, in in um, and in Deuteronomy. Okay, essentially, he it is considered to be the last festival, right? Because the festival of Passover is in the first month. Then we have the festival of um, weeks, which falls in the third month. Okay, and, and the festival of Sukkot, of booths, which falls in the third month. I'll read these verses, which talk about some aspects of Sukkot. Okay, again, Basukot Teshevu Shivaat Yamim. In booth you shall dwell for seven days. Kol ha'ezrach be Yisrael Yeshevu Basukot. All the 
autochtonic people, people who come, who are native, okay, to Israel, which means all of the people in Israel shall dwell in booths. So that your generations might know, for in booths that in booths I settled or let the Israelites dwell when I took them out of the land of Egypt. Ani Adonai Elohim, I am the Lord your God, also known as the Chag Ha'asif, the festival of gathering. We mentioned that the month is known as the month of gathering in the Gezer calendar. So festival of gather or gathering or in gathering or harvest festival. Okay. Uh, but generally known as the festival of booths because of the Sukkot. The seventh day of the of the festival of Sukkot is the last day of Sukkot, is also known in again post-biblical uh, tradition as Hoshana Rabbah, the day of great deliverance supplication. Uh, it's a day where everybody take the the willow branches and circle the um uh, goes in circle inside the synagogues, uh, commemorating a practice that was done in the temple. Um, again, there there are many traditions, specifics, reasons. Uh, just Hosha'ana, I'll, I'll just show you one. Hosha'ana. This Hosha'ana, right? Please deliver. Hosha. That's the root for deliverance, yod, shin, and ein. And na is please, right? Please deliver. Pry, deliver. How is your gimatria, guys? I'll ask you and you'll have to answer me. Uh, what is the alphanumerical value of na, right? Hosha means deliver. And what is the alphanumerical value of nun and alif? Let's see, guys. Let's see. In the chat or in the Q&A, how much it amounts to? Don't be shy. Yes. Very good, John and Lynn. Almost at the same moment. So, uh, Lynn. Can you, uh, I'll open your mic and you'll tell us the answer. John, you'll forgive me, but I have a strict policy of, of, uh, of, uh, you know, preferring women, uh, for, because I believe in that. Yeah. So Lynn, can you, uh, tell us what is the alphanumerical value of na? Open the microphone. You have to unmute, yeah. 51. 51. 51. This is the 51st day from the beginning of the previous month, the month of Elul, which is considered to be the beginning of the process of repentance. Now, Hoshana Rabbah is considered to be the final day where, like, the see, God is sealing the deal. Of, of what would happen with us this year. So you have a month of Elul, then you have, if you're good on Rosh Hashanah, God delivers you, then you get another chance until Yom HaKippurim, and then final chance until the day of Hoshana Rabbah. So you have 51 days from the beginning of the month of Elul, which is known as the month of uh, penance, okay, and compassion. All the way 51 days to the day of Hoshana Rabbah. So Hoshana, remember, 51 days of repentance and, and supplication and, and chances. Okay, moving on to the last element before we move on to the um to the um question of uh, to the QA part. 
שמיני עצרת אין שמחת תורה. So in Israel, these two are together. Remember that I said when we went through the holidays, I said, oh, that's, that's on the 21st, and this is on the 22nd, and also on the 23rd. Okay, this is related to the fact that on the diaspora, we have a second day in every holiday. They celebrate for two days. So the, they have two Seder nights in Passover, and they celebrate two days on the seventh day of Passover. And they celebrate two days in the beginning of, of Sukkot. The first day of Sukkot, they celebrate two days. And the last day of Sukkot, uh, which is the, the eighth day already, the solemn assembly, they celebrate the eighth day and the ninth day as well. So the eighth day is Shemini Atzeret, uh, following this verse in Numbers 29.35, Bayom HaShemini, on the eighth day, you should have a solemn assembly. You shall do no labor work. Okay. That's Shemini Atzeret. Basically, by Yom HaShemini, Atzeret Lachem. But the name that stuck is Shemini Atzeret, the eighth of the solemn assembly. In Israel, that is the same day we celebrate Simchat Torah, which is a later tradition. We complete the reading of the Torah. That is the tradition according to which we read all of the Torah each year, every, every week, a weekly portion, right? You know that I put every week on my, on my YouTube channel a video about the weekly portion. So you're more than welcome to look up and, and subscribe to my video to my uh, YouTube channel where you can see these videos uh, about the weekly portion. And every year we uh, finish reading the Torah. So if you go to synagogue, you will cover the Torah every year, okay? And we finish reading the Torah and we start because as soon as we finish, we again start, okay, this cycle. We finish Deuteronomy, we start Genesis every year on the day of Simchat Torah. Again, in the diaspora, these are two separate days. In Israel, it's the same day. Simchat Torah, we dance with the Torah scrolls in the streets, uh, both in the evening and in the morning. Very, very uh, joyous. People even drink a little bit in the synagogue. It's a very, very, um, it's a special, special day. Uh, kids oftentimes have these flags. You can see this is a flag uh, that kids have. And on the flag, you can see kids dancing. You can see people holding the Torah. Uh, note what they say, that this is not a, a celebration of learning. We don't learn it so much. Uh, and we dance with it. We, we feel joyous with it when it is covered. When it is covered, it belongs to everybody the same way. You don't have... You're not celebrating according to how much you know or how much you don't, but because it's yours, you feel connected to it. Okay, so it's the, the essential connection to the Torah that is celebrated and not so much from the cognitive part, from how I know how I learned it, but the fact that I, that I belong the, to the Torah and the Torah belongs to me, that's the celebration. As I said, it's a post-biblical celebration. So that's a little bit about the month of Tishrei and the uh, holidays of it. And we did it in uh, 45 minutes. That's not bad. Now I am opening this to any of your questions. You want to know more about one of these holidays or, or anything? Uh, just click the raise hand or, or uh, you have reactions. So I think there, there is a reaction button. You can click the raise hand or write or do anything, and I'll be more than happy to take your question. So, <clears throat> okay, Don, I'm opening it to, um, let's say, answer live. Okay. Very good. I'm answering this. I'm also opening your microphone to ask this question. Uh, 
question. And you know what? I'm promoting you to a panelist so we can see you. Okay. Oh, no, I, I don't think you need to be a panelist. So uh, go ahead. Can you unmute the microphone and ask? I just wanted to know what was your favorite holiday and why, if you're comfortable sharing that, please. Sure, 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 sure. I love all of these holidays, but uh, but there is something about Simchat Torah that gets me going. Um, it's it's a very joyous moment. People are a little bit more loose. Um, I I live in a small community, so everybody has to you know you cannot like let others do the work. So everybody has to dance and sing and and exhaust themselves. And I find myself, and I want to apologize in advance, and it's quite in advance because it's, as I said, it's on the 22nd of, of Tishrei. So it means it's about um, almost three weeks from now. I'll be probably Horus. I, I finished that holiday Horus, uh, and it takes me a day or two to recover from that holiday. So there you go. It doesn't help that it's at the end of the holiday season. So if it were to be in the middle, I wouldn't have to teach right after, but what can I do? Uh, I, I obviously, I, I read the Torah uh, in, in our synagogue, so I, I have to do that. And, and singing, a lot of singing, a lot of dancing. I love the singing part and I love dancing. I do both of them not so well, So, uh, but I don't suffer. It's only the people who have to hear me singing who suffer. And the people who have to see me dance who suffer. So uh, I enjoy. My kids are embarrassed. Uh, then the other people in the synagogue might suffer. I don't know, but I love it. Uh, yes, John, go ahead. Yeah, I was curious. So what um, what do Jews who are not religious do with celebrating the, the, the argue, arguably religious holidays? Okay, that 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 is an excellent question. You, you right? You say, "Oh, just a second. If there, if you're not religious, you know, why would you celebrate uh, um, a religious holiday?" Here comes the difference between Judaism and arguably, again, I think the the comparison that is relevant for most of us here is Judaism and Christianity. Uh, Judaism is not just a religion. Judaism is a national identity, an ethnic identity, um, and not just a religious identity. Uh, it's a little bit like, again, uh, I know it's a bad example, but think about uh, people in America who are not necessarily Christians celebrating some Christian themes of certain holidays, because there is at a certain point a kind of a conflation of of re religion or religious religiously originated uh, celebrations and practices and life and identity that is national. In the case of Judaism, it is really ingrained in, in Judaism. This ethnic slash cultural slash genetic slash um it's not just a religion that's the the point of judaism so a person can say i'm a non you know i'm an atheist jew uh for instance uh, i know it's it's ridiculous right because uh but but there are people and they don't feel they're they're not jewish Someone said that in Judaism you can believe in one God or less, and I'm I'm not advocating that, but I'm saying that the identity of Jews is not predicated just on their religious views. So they might view themselves wholeheartedly Jewish, but non-religious. While I I don't know if it could work for Christianity, for instance. Again, I'm not an expert on Christianity, but in Judaism, it is very common. So you can see all of this, kind of the bicycles on the Day of Atonement. You know, you don't go to synagogue necessarily. You don't observe it. 
you might fast some of it or or just as part of our net heritage you know you say to yourself oh my ancestors did it for so long i'm proud of my heritage so i uh i respect it um i think that this is uh for instance um benjamin netanyahu is a good example if you ask me he is a uh, agnostic at best but he is uh he has a very very strong sense of history uh he is the son of a historian okay and he himself loves history very much so he has a lot of respect for the jewish history and jewish tradition so he might be he might attend a synagogue or or might do some of the things or speak in a certain way but just it doesn't mean that he is he believes in that so so it's part of the tradition even for those people who are not religious am i making sense john because it's very different yeah no no that makes total sense I, and you know and i see that like with people i that i work with for example that are that are jews but they'll they'll very you know clearly say i'm not religious you know they make that clear um but i guess it's sort of like like Christians who celebrate Easter as sort of a secular event, right? In a way, right? right. Or, but in Judaism, it's, 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 it's like it's like very common. It's it's a it's very common, like to to yeah. to be. Um, it, it can go, it, it, yeah, because of of the Judaism not being just a religion. Okay, so interesting. Thank you. Sure. No problem. Uh, Dean. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just a question. Um, was it the Day of Atonement? Why no leather shoes? Oh, because shoes used to be made of leather. And so, uh, and so when I said no leather shoes, at the point when that was decided, it was no shoes, basically. Now, today, okay. almost none of the shoes, you know, um, all of the most comfortable shoes are not made of leather. So some people say, and, and that's a very interesting question, because some people say, listen, the decision was no leather shoes. So every other shoe goes and all of the like the most comfortable shoes that you can have are today completely like not like they're vegan they're they're uh all kinds of uh uh polymers no leather uh yeah. but some people say oh th you know they meant so they meant that you won't be comfortable okay so you should not stick to the no leather but understand don't be comfortable don't have other shoes right okay thank so that's, you that's the point uh, Thank you. As you understand, every detail here has like elaborate discussions behind it. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, my pleasure. Frank. Uh, Frank, I saw your hand is up. Go ahead. Oh, are there special readings during this time period uh, uh, above the parasha? Or I should say, in addition to the parasha. What about the uh, in addition to the parasha? What special readings? Special readings, yes. Yeah. So every holiday has special readings. Uh, I have to tell you a super funny story about it. Uh, every okay. Every holiday has a special reading. For instance, on, on, the, uh, on Rosh Hashanah, we read about the birth of Isaac, and then we read the story of the Akedah, the binding of Isaac, uh, commonly known as the sacrifice of Isaac. Um, on the Day of Atonement, we read Leviticus 18, Leviticus 20. Um, um, we read, uh, we read the, the, the story of what would have been... What was in the temple we we read in all of these high holy days we also read about what would be sacrificed on on that day in the temple and so forth and so on there, there are various specific readings for each of the holy days on on the you know 
No, I'm not telling that story. Even though it's a funny story, I don't want it to be misunderstood. So I'm skipping that story. You'll forgive me, guys. Too late. I, another stage. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Another day, another time. Okay. Uh, I see that there are... Okay, so James, he wasn't a rabbi. He was a painter. He was a painter. Maurizio Gottlieb. Uh, he was a famous painter. I'm not, you know, I'm not telling you anything that is not out there. Uh, yes. Uh, Ron, I'm opening. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's just, a, uh, not a question. Mm -mm -mm, not a question. Um, the Levites in the temple were barefoot. That is correct, Maureen. Uh, how long is the fast? So there are two fasts that are, that I mentioned. I've mentioned the fast of Gedaliah, which is from uh, sunrise till sunset. This week it was about fourteen hours, because because like it's, it was fourteen. In the case of the Day of Atonement, it's twenty five hours roughly. That's how long the fast is. Uh, any other questions? Uh, John, I see your hand is up. Do you still have a question? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I forgot to put it down. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Right. Any other questions? Don't be shy. John. Actually, I, I do have a question. Uh, I mean, as well, it's, it's what I'm just curious about. What, what is the, the significance of the yarmulke the, that you wear? Okay. So yes. it's a good yeah. question. Yamaka is not a commandment, okay? You'll take your Bible, you'll read it cover to cover, you'll even like take the pages like that upside <laughs> down, you won't find a yarmulke, okay? So let's <laughs> let's make it clear. In the Babylonian Talmud, when a certain uh, rabbi is told about a very important, uh, a very smart young rabbi, he meets him. And he asks him, how come you don't have a head covering? Uh, and that head covering was probably something that was practiced by married men. And he's actually asking him, how come you're not married yet? Okay, because being married was very important, uh, not living, you know, as a, as a bachelor. And it was probably something that was, as I said, practiced by married men. Over the time, it became to be a standard for all men, and then in extension, it has explanations. I remember that there is someone above me, right? It reminds me of that, but that's the, the history of the yarmulke. Then also, uh, it might have been something that Jews were uh, forced to, to wear. You can see that, like, the pointy uh, medieval uh, depictions of a special Jew hat that they were uh, forced to to wear in some places in Europe. Uh, but that's the, the story of the yarmulke. Uh, again, what I'm telling you, you probably won't hear uh, uh, elsewhere. If you ask people, they, they would probably give you the line of, oh, it reminds me that there is God above me, which is good, but it's not the historical, like, story behind it. That almost sounds like it was was sort of like the ring that we wear today, right? For married back in in the original day, kind of. Right. It's it's a it's a head head covering. Um, I don't know if it's exactly like the ring. I'm sure the ring also has a very interesting uh, story. I, again, I know mm -hmm. why in Judaism women were were ring. Uh, men also, you know, I have a ring, but I think it's more like from the for the same reasons. That uh, you know, non-Jewish men have rings. Um, again, not not a lot of jewelry, uh, only the wedding ring, and even uh, wedding ring. By the way, if we're already talking about the celebrations of of Yom of the Tishrei, the holidays of the month of Tishrei, it is a custom that women or men don't have gold jewelries on the Day of Atonement not to remind the sin of the golden calf. Okay, uh, the Day of Atonement is part of the process of atoning for that sin as well. So, uh, a little bit about, you know, the ring and how it's related to Yom Kippurim as well. Uh, cool. 
Sure. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. So don't be shy. If you have any, you're more than welcome to uh, click the uh, raise hand. Uh, you have reactions and you can find the uh, raise hand. Okay. Uh, I think you should uh, address that to the uh, to other people. I'm not an expert on the Pope. Betsy uh, Betsy's asking why the Pope has a yarmulke. Not just the Pope, all the cardinals as well. They have a. My father told me a story. He once flew to to I think it was Africa, somewhere maybe Nigeria, and someone saw that my father had a yarmulke. And he asked him, "Where is there? Where is your diocese? You know, where where are you uh, serving as a as a clergyman?" Um, he mistook his yarmulke as a, as a as a like Catholic like head covering. I don't know how they call theirs. If there is anyone who has insight as to the question, why uh, do cardinals have this yarmulke? Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, Google Professor Google knows. I don't know. Uh, yeah. May. Okay, guys. So thank you very much for uh, coming and listening. I hope you learned about the holidays. It was interesting. It was enriching. And um, keep in touch. And thank you. And if there are no other questions, by the way, on the Day of Atonement, we read the story of Jonah, which, again, uh, the last group for now starting to read the story of Jonah will start on the 20th of October, which would be 21st Israeli uh, time or 20th. And if you're not currently taking uh, that course or any other course, you're more than invited. There are currently courses about the uh, stories of Eliyahu, the story of the book of Judges, the book of Ruth, the book of Jonah. Uh, with anyone attending them is also uh, invited to uh, uh, two questions and answers hours a week where we uh, take questions, but also practice uh, reading, parsing verbs, etc., etc., so all of these um, are available. Um, you ha all have my email. You all uh, are invited. If you're not, if you have WhatsApp and you don't, you're not part of the WhatsApp group. I uh, I also have a biblical Hebrew WhatsApp group, and I'll send you the link. In I'll send you a, a, one of the emails. I hope you're receiving my emails. Again, YouTube channel, everything all of those uh, outlets to Biblical Hebrew that I can. And thank you. And I'll see you uh, either tonight, some of you, or uh, over the month or next time. Okay, guys, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Nathaniel. Sure, it's my pleasure. Bye-bye, guys.